In this video, we're going to talk about air suspensions for Mercedes Sprinters and other suspension upgrades we've done to our van. Welcome back to Freely Roaming. My name is Dan. And I'm Marlene. In 2020, after we came back from Africa into back into Europe during the pandemic, when we were back in Croatia, another traveler friend of ours had told us they have the exact same van as ours, basically same year, same model, 4x4, and they have the same air suspension installed in their van. And they were going to come through Croatia, so they reached out to us and actually asked us about a welding shop, if we knew about somebody who could do welding. Mm -hmm. So we asked them a little bit deeper about what, what it was for, why they needed, and it turns out their air suspension has caused the crack at the top of where it's bolted to the unibody chassis of their Sprinter. On both sides. On both sides. Yeah, exactly. So they were identical on both sides. And that got us a little bit worried because we have the exact same van and we also have that exact same suspension. And I'll put the link to the actual part down below for you guys. So when they told us that they had this happen to them, we crawled under our van mm -hmm. and we noticed the exact same cracks. So that was a little disconcerting. And um, what we um, realized what we had to do is that we had to find a place to get this fixed right away by reinforcing with metal plates and welding it back up. Mm -hmm. But also we had to support the suspension support the weight of the van, not just using these air suspensions that we had to use actual leaf springs. That was a trouble. We used one instead of a combination of both. Yeah, so we've had airbags in all of our campers that we had before. We had a, a GMC Savannah van, which is like a Chevy Express that we were towing an Airstream with. We had airbags in that. We mm -hmm. actually had two sets of airbags. First set, we used them for a long time and then they eventually broke. Yeah. So that I had to replace it with the exact same ones. And then we had a, a, a Ford F-250 diesel. Uh, we also had airbags installed. And then we had another Ford F-250 long bed gas. And we also had airbags installed in that as well. What what my experience with airbags in, in uh, body-on-frame trucks like that, and the GMC Savannah van was also a body-on-frame truck chassis, is that it's perfect. Uh, assuming that you know, you do the regular maintenance to these airbags. But Mercedes Sprinter being a unibody chassis, the frame rails, there are actual sort of frame rails underneath where the suspension is bolted to. They're only reinforced at the ends where the suspension sort of eyes are bolted to the frame. So in the middle, you have a factory bump stop. That's like a basically just a piece of, you know, heavy duty rubber that prevents the suspension from bottoming out when you hit something too hard. And this air suspension that I installed goes right on the same mounting point as the bump stop. But the problem with ours, I think, is that um, we're not too heavily overweight, but I think what happened is that we added a one inch spacer, mm -hmm. which it goes in between the leaf spring and the, and the frame rail which pushes the leaf springs further down to give us more height. But what that also did is that it put more pressure on the frame rails. So that may not have been ideal. So a single point, right? Pressure. One point on each side. Yeah. Right. Uh, and there's also kind of a weak point where there's a weld. So it cracked right there. And we don't know how long it was cracked. Uh, by the time we looked down there, it was, it, it didn't seem like there was any rust built built around it or anything but there is like this really thick like rubbery under coating on the on the bottom of the van anyway so you can't really tell how how rusty it is i mean we went on a lot of bad roads in morocco and africa and greece and greece yeah and how many miles do we have on this van uh oh we're almost up to our Service B, so what is that? Forty thousand, about miles. forty thousand miles. So it's not a, it's not a lot of miles, but um, some of the miles are pretty heavy miles. So we don't know exactly when it happened. Like, could it happen within the first week of us installing these uh, these springs, or could it happen last year in Morocco? When did we install and get the van? We installed 
We installed it right away after we bought the van. It was one of the first things that we did. Yeah, so we've had this this uh, these um, air springs in there for a while. Um, so what we ended up doing is we had to find somebody in Croatia to help us weld the frame back up. And that was pretty difficult to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know... RVs like this or camper vans like this are not popular in Croatia. Like our RVing and, and and traveling by by camper van is is um, more of a, a Western Europe thing. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of Eastern Europe they come from sort of the socialist communist you know era that ended for for the most part like in the nineties. So people didn't have a lot of money. So this is considered kind of a luxury. And also people used to live in sort of you know tougher situations. And to say that you're going to live in a car is like, oh, I, I'm not going to do that. You know, and that's what poor people do when they travel. But, you know, which is obviously not the case anymore. People are sort of traveling like we do as a, as a, as a luxury by choice. So we had trouble trying to find somebody who would work on this, uh, this, uh, this frame crack. But eventually we found somebody and it was sort of a, a weird situation. We had this guy who works as like some kind of mechanic for the Croatian military during the day. And he has like a, a, a repair shop at his house where he yeah. and his dad does some repair work. So, you know, he's willing to do the work for us. He came in the middle of the night to where, where our van is parked to look at it, to give us a quote. He wasn't willing to commit to a quote right away. And then we took the van over there and we said, okay, we want to see how you do this welding because it's really important that it's done right. He's like, okay, okay. You know, he had a lot of, like, he said a lot of things that made us, made it sound like that he was the right person to go to, mm -hmm. which I'm not saying that he didn't do a good job necessarily, but he didn't do a lot of the things that we asked him to do, which is, you know, weld in a specific way that I know would be stronger. And also like not paint over what he finished so that we can see what his welds look like before he covered it up. So all of these things happened and we weren't too happy about, um, you know, him not listening to these simple things. So we weren't sure whether or not it was strong enough, but I think it turned out to be okay. But what we had to do to really feel comfortable with the van after the crack was repaired was to add a additional leaf spring to our rear suspension so that the weight was no longer completely supported you know, just at the single point on each side using these air suspensions. Mm -hmm. So we ended up, we had some trouble finding that too. So we found... Uh, Where we ordered it from somewhere. We found a suspension leaf spring shop in the UK. Oh, good thing it was before Brexit. Pre-Brexit. <laughs> technically post-Brexit, but it was pre the final day, which is yeah. at the end of uh, December 2020. Mm -hmm. So we had stuff shipped from the UK. We had these big beefy extra leaves sent from the uk shipped to us and uh we we have a friend uh in croatia who owns croatia campers they have these big parking spaces at their at their uh, depot mm -hmm. it's kind of like a bus depot for the city that he rents some space where he keeps his camper vans and uh you know because we don't have a place to to do this work all the places right. that we park the van is either like in the village on a super slanted you know rough road or on the side of the road when we're in split. So our friends from Croatia Campers let us use their covered parking space to do the work. So I was able to take the springs and relatively easily, you know, using just bottle jacks and, and just, uh, you know, regular tools that we carry, uh, add a leaf to our rear suspensions. So. And I think you wanted also to be in the city because you actually needed to buy a new... That's right. Thing, and we want it to be near uh, shops to buy stuff if we needed it. Yeah, because when our van is up on jacks, we don't have a way of driving anywhere. Mm -hmm. And because it was during the pandemic, we didn't want to have to take public transportation if we had a choice. So we um, we actually broke our factory bottle jack halfway through the through the upgrade, and I had to walk from where we were all the way to the. The, the big box hardware store to buy another bottle jack, which worked out. You know, we uh, we were able to do this in pretty much one afternoon. So now we have uh, a beefy suspension that this van is originally rated for three and a half tons. 
And now with the inclusion of that new leaf spring, it's technically able to handle five tons now, even though it's still rated the same. We didn't get the van re-rated. So now I'm much happier with the suspension. So for those of you that are considering suspension upgrades for your van, for your Sprinter van or any unibody van specifically, um, look into this a little bit more. Consider that you probably want to have leaf springs, actual leaf springs added to your rear suspension than just relying solely on airbags. Well, we put those airbags back in, but without the spacer. Because the airbags are no longer supporting as much weight as it was before. It's, it's sort of what they're designed to do now. So now they're just acting as heavy duty bump stops. So that's our story with our suspension upgrade in our Sprinter van in the year 2020. I hope you guys find that helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll see you guys in the next video.